Hello! Welcome to Chicago Reacts. My name is Colin, uh, in case you're wondering who this uh, stranger is. Um, that's me. This is me, Colin. Uh, I'm new here, in case you couldn't gather that. Uh, and this is my first official video with Chicago Reacts. Uh, for those of you who uh, didn't take a look at, at my audition video, I guess. Um, if if you didn't, probably means you're not a patron. And if that's the case, why why not? Um, you should be liking the video and sharing the video and subscribing to the channel. And if you're so kind and have you know some extra dollars to throw around, become a patron and you'd be able to get to see content like new people's audition videos, and you can critique them and judge them and choose their fate. Um, so. I feel like that's enough of an introduction, right? Um, yeah, I, I'm sure this will get hopefully easier uh, and less awkward uh, as as I gain more experience in this. But uh, yeah, uh, without further ado, today I am going to be watching "Where Animals' Scientific Names Come From" by Sam Onella. All right, so let's get into it. Okay, spacebar doesn't work. Let's try mouse. Here we go. Ah, hey, kids. I just woke hey. up from a nap I took in January of 2020, and boy, are my arms tired. Let's see what I missed. Hmm. Queen's dead, war in Ukraine, the Taliban's back. What? What is... Holy shit. They made a movie called Scoob. <laughs> Unprecedented global pandemic, Space Jam 2, some popular guy named Brandon. Yep, that just about covers it. Anyway, we all know <laughs> about the scientific names of animals, but did you ever wonder what they actually mean? To find out, we must look to taxonomists. They're the guys responsible for the systems of nomenclature oh. we use to... Hold up. Alright, so I recognize the animals, for the most part, from left to right. Jellyfish. Turtle. Not a tortoise. Or no, no, that is a tortoise, because it has the feet, not the fins. So tortoise, Al alligator, crocodile thing, uh, monkey, salmonella, person, human, white monkey, the like the ones you'd see in the the hot springs, and then what the fuck is that? I don't wait. Is that from? Um. Oh my god! One of those David Lynch movies or shows that. I don't know. If, if you know the answer of the inspiration for that horrifying image there, uh, let me know in the comments, please. Classify organisms. And boy, are they convoluted. First, you got the big eight. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. I've seen plenty of mnemonic devices for this, but since the D just showed up in the 90s and is still disputed by some scientists, he's usually not included. So allow me to suggest a few. Dizzy kids puke cereal on fairground staff. Dumb kittens pushing cups over feeds growing spite. <laughs> Donkey Kong's p <laughs> fucking g serendipitously. The way this huh. whole thing works. Wait, hang on a second. I do. I do want to. Excuse me. Uh. Okay. Serendipit. Right. Okay. So Donkey Kong's pussy comes. I don't know. Why would O be? P Donkey Kong's pussy comes. Uh, over fucking genitalia serendipitously? I don't know. If you know the answer, or if you got a, a better guess than I do, please let me know in the comments. Serendipitously. The way this whole thing works differs slightly depending on which kingdom you pick. So today we'll be sticking to the animal one, cause that one's the coolest and I'm in it. So what constitutes each taxon is pretty arbitrary, they basically just serve to act as another set of branches in the tree that taxonomists build. The one exception is species, which is generally defined as any group of animals that can have babies with each other that aren't sterile freaks. Mule, liger, zedonk, skunk ape, mm -hmm. they can live fulfilling zedonk. lives, oh. but they're all- Fun fact, I actually, um... Uh, uh, several years ago, like 10 years ago, my, my parents owned uh, a house in San Inez, California, near Santa Barbara, anyway. Uh, and one of their neighbors had a zonkey, a Debra zonkey. And it was very cute, very affectionate, and, you know, like liked the pets. It was, it was cool. Anyway. 
all shooting blank, so they don't count. On the other hand, in our innumerable trespasses against God, we can make things like Chidane Danes, which actually <laughs> work, so dogs are dogs are dogs. Besides species, though, it's Ugh. the Wild West in here. Plenty of times, eight tiers isn't even enough for scientists, so they just stick new sub-levels in between. Legions, cohorts, tribes, series, divisions, and if you want to keep going, you can throw all kinds of prefixes on any of these for even more layers. There's even subspecies, which the more pedantic of you may think to yourself that creating names for subspecies at all kind of undermines the single somewhat agreed upon definition in the whole tree. To that, my friends, taxonomists say, but while that's pretty complex, the actual names themselves are pretty easy to wrap your head around. Though taxonomists may hide behind their fancy Greek and Latin, the Vulgate is no substitute for wit. Now, I've scraped through the scientific names of a load of species, and most of them can be split into a few categories. The simplest ones are the animals that already have names in Greek or Latin. It's a lion, I'm calling it a leo. Done. Tiger, it's a tigris. Cat, it's a caddis. Easy. <laughs> Multi-word names can be translated the same way. For the golden eagle, we got Aquila chrysaetos. Gold eagle eagle. They decided to be a show off and do eagle in Greek and Latin, essentially the same though. But if a species is too specific or exotic for a one-to-one -one translation, that's when you gotta get a little creative. A lot of the time, inspiration comes from just giving the creature the old once-over and pointing out some cool-looking body part. Generally, the more distinct of an identifying feature it is, wonder, the more- Wait, so, like, he was pointing out on the ostrich the, the uh, knees or ankles? I don't know what it is on the, with the birds, but does ostrich- does ost have something to do with knees or ankles? I don't know. Anyway, just I I wish he had explained a little bit more about that. I, I wanted to know more about this ostrich, but where the animal scientific names come from? Oh, okay. Anyway out some cool looking body part. Generally, the more distinct of an identifying feature it is, the more likely it'll get in the name. For example, Homeboy took one look at this thing and said, yup, red triangle slug. I'm going on break. We call this thing Makes a fucking sense. unicorn, almost like that means one <laughs> horn or something. Also, some guy deadass looked at an octopus and said, well, all they got is heads and feet. I'm gonna call them head foot. And now <laughs> biologists everywhere say cephalopod unironically. Matter of fact, if it's got feet, chances are that's part of its name somewhere. You got four feet, six feet, eight feet, ten feet, two feet, equal feet, both feet, double feet, stomach feet, lip feet, sucker feet, wing feet, big feet, slow feet, or feet, both feet, joint feet, no feet, ten thousand feet, cow's feet, spade feet, cat feet, small feet. If it doesn't look that interesting, another thing to point nice. out is where you found it. This could be a territory like American bear or Siamese crocodile, or just a habitat like woods macaque or toilet rat. But that's <laughs> boring. We need to look at the men behind the magic and what drives and motivates them. Now, if there's one thing that the scientific community loves, it's clout. And there's no better way to go down in history than plastering your own name on some shit you found. But not all fields have the same volume of things to scribble the old John Hancock over. On the one end, you got physicists just making up their own slightly different form of ionizing radiation measurement and even then only the top dogs that that guy the middle lower picture there his chin beard looks like a butt i just wanted to point that out it's got away with it now zoology any little goober flouncing through the underbrush can say this one has 13 spots but the one in the books only got 11 I will call him Splinkus's Ladybird. <laughs> Alternatively, plenty of biologists have given shout outs to their contemporaries, both other biologists and those across the academic gamut, from geologists to physicists to explorers and more. Naturally, Darwin's got a shitload, but even the background characters get immortalized one way or another. Who are Thompson, Grant, Summering, Erlinger, Speak, and Cuvier? I don't know, but they've all got gazelles, so they must be pretty cool. Of course, other times, the name checks go to people who had fuck all to do with anything except for one taxonomist being a fan of theirs. Plenty of popular celebrities have species named after them, but since all the big cute stuff was found and branded a while ago, most of these idols are commemorated through repulsive little invertebrates. You got Scaptia, Beyonce, -a. the only similarity I can gather here is Queen Bee, looks like a bee, both not a real bee. There's Anomphilus Jagarius, an old stone named after an old stone. <laughs> In 2007, one Jason Bond, a professor of biology at UC Davis, dubbed this little dude Myrmechiophila Neil Youngy to honor his favorite musician, which caused my man Stephen Colbert to go on TV TV and profess his utter indignation at not having a spider named after himself. So naturally, the next year, Bond actually went on the Colbert Report to announce the naming of Apostatist Stephen Colbert. So, if that gives any of you epic biologists out there any ideas, you know, I wouldn't be opposed. Please, I would do anything. For the love of God, I'll even take a liking. The world of politics is by no means immune. Well, I mean, he's already got salmonella. So... Not quite what he was looking for, though. I, I get it. Okay. 
you know this phenomenon. Obama alone has fucking nine, as do a load of other presidents. Nine? What Trump's the? Got a moth with funny hair. Bush <laughs> has a fungus beetle. Reagan's a wasp. Carter's got a darter, and so forth. Even Austria's most famous painter got the honor through this blind cave beetle. Mind you, it was 1933, so you can only blame the guy a tiny bit. Hitler actually wrote him a letter saying, "Oh, thank you, my little entomolo mensch," and then went on to do, you know, Hitler things. Fun fact: not only was this beetle stuck with just about the worst name you could have, it's also now facing extinction solely because of its value to Nazi memorabilia collectors. Oh Guess no. All habits die hard. Oop, fictional characters have their fair share of species under their belt. On the topic of evil beetles, this one's named after Darth Vader because mm -hmm. he kind of looks like his helmet, I guess. <laughs> this was actually named by the same guy who did the Bush one and belongs to the same genus. Hmm. There's also this mite, genus Darth Vaderum, which is a lot more accurate and frightening. In 2012, a single bone from above the eye socket of a hitherto unidentified theropod dinosaur was being studied. And suddenly, under the light of the full moon, the guy working with the specimen had his neck covered with hair and his lips clenched into a pog and his endocrine system filled with soil and he said, it's just like the eye of Sauron. And then he started chewing on Funko Pops and sweating cream of meme and snorting G Fuel and shitting D20s everywhere until the prostate stimulation made him. The dino's genus is now Sauroniops from Sorry. Eye of Sauron. This spider was named after Godric Gryffindor because... Uh, okay, so I, I guess the only relation to, to Sauron, the eye of Sauron, is the fact that it was a, the bone from the eye? Eh, whatever. Why not? I, I like Lord of the Rings. I'm not complaining. I'm just trying to understand. It looks like the sorting hat. SpongeBob has not that is a cool fucking but a fungus. bug though. The legendary birds from Pokemon each have their own. You guessed it, beetle. And the list goes on. <laughs> Scientists are nerds. Who knew? Anyway, while this all seems kind of chaotic, there is I some method to the madness. One rule is the principle of priority. This states that once somebody publishes their chosen name for a species for the first time, that's the name, and other taxonomists typically can't change it. This has led to plenty of misnomers coined by whoever got their foot in the door first, particularly in the case of the guys doing this stuff before we had the luxury of genetic analysis. Here's one. Red Panda? Nah. Shining Cat, coined in 1825. <laughs> to be fair, they're actually about as close to cats as they are to actual pandas, so so whatever. Here's oh two. Capsicum chinense. Okay, wait. Hang on a second. I just want to look at that panda again. Can someone... <laughs> uh, it, can someone please let me know in the comments if you know the answer to this. Is this... um This channel, uh, Sam Onella, is it one person? Is it a team of people? Is Sam Onella doing all the drawings and animation of this? I just want to know. Like It's very... It's a very unique, um, stylized, uh, cartoon animation drawing style, uh, that I appreciate. I gotta say, I appreciate it. They are the actual pandas, so whatever. Here's two. Capsicum chinense. Eaten there? Sure. Native? Only off by around half a globe, where literally all hot peppers came from. This principle holds true even if someone thinks they've found a new species, only to later discover that it was already named. For example, in 1824, one John Edward Gray documented the plain zebra, calling it Equus burchellii, or Birchell's horse, named after a renowned naturalist of the day. Little did he know, back in 17 1885, some other douche classified this character as the quagga. The last quagga died in a Dutch prison in 1883. So, why do we care? Well, in the a 2000s, Dutch scientists prison? decided to scrape some gunk off a dry quagga pelt and study its DNA. And from that, they realized, wait a minute, apparently this guy and zebras could have, you know, made a little plaid in the hay together. So technically, they're one species. And mm -hmm. today, they're both called quagga. Sounds kind of asinine, but then again, so does asinus, and that worked out fine. Just to maintain the <coughs> distinction, the extinct subspecies was renamed quagga quagga, so you know it's the real quagga. <laughs> this double naming is that kind of like buffalo, buffalo, buffalo? For those of you who know. Invention has been done with a lot of subspecies, in fact. Wild, wild horse, spotted, spotted panther, or my favorite, gorilla, gorilla, gorilla. Just like, yeah, it's See? the gorilla's gorilla like... that ever gorilled. Fuck you want from me. A closely related rule also states that the names of all taxa have to be unique. So if two people coincidentally name any taxa on the same thing, the older one gets to stay and the new one gets the boot. Like <laughs> if you saw a genus called echidna, you'd think it was, you know, an echidna, right? Well, no, that'd make too much sense. For a while it was true, from 1797 to 1811. Then it was pointed out that someone else already called a genus of moray eels echidna back in 1788. So the real echidna had to be changed to tachyglossus, or quick tongue. Then a decade later, a dude did the same mm. thing for a genus of vipers. Another 22 years passed, people discovered the same thing, and they were renamed to bitisk. But like where, okay, uh, uh, my l Greek and Latin, whatever, not great, but what does echidna actually mean? Or is that, was it named after a person? I, uh, perhaps I... He mentioned that, and I completely just, you know, in one ear, out the other, over my head, uh, kind of thing. So, interesting. Echidna. 
because they bit us. That one at least made a bit of sense, <laughs> given that the original echidna from Greek mythology was half lady, half snake, but who cares at this point? Anyway, I've just barely scraped the surface right. of all the goofy right. names out there, so feel free to post more down below. I That's feel all like... like a glossus or a quick tongue. Then a decade later... Sorry, I'm just going over this because I, f I feel like I did just, like, miss what he said. I'm going to start that over again. The boot. Like, if you saw a genus called Echidna, you'd think it was, you know, an echidna, right? Well, no, that'd make too much sense. For a while it was true, from 1797 to 1811. Then it was pointed out that someone else already called a genus of moray eels Echidna back in 1788. So the real Echidna had to be changed to Tachyglossus, or Quick Tongue. Then a decade later, a dude did the same thing for a genus of vipers. Another 22 years passed, people discovered the same thing, and they were renamed to Bitis, cause they Bitis. That one at least <laughs> made a bit of sense, given that the original Echidna from Greek mythology was half lady, half snake, but who cares at this point? Anyway. Am I missing something? What, why did that come up? That one at least made a bit of sense, given that the original echidna from Greek mythology was half lady, half snake, but... So... Is echidna, then, the name of that... Uh, I don't want to say character, but that person from Greek mythology? Was that the name of this half lady, half snake creature? Some, someone let me know. I'm I'm very ignorant. Anyway, I've just barely scraped the surface of all the goofy names out there, so feel free to post more down below. That's all I've got for now. Till next time, I'm Sam Manella, and I'll see you in 2025. Okay. Cool. Uh, that was entertaining, educational. Um, yeah. Cool. Sam Onella. I like it. Um... Definitely very silly, very uh, uh, unique uh, artistic style. Kind of you know, seems like very, um, I don't know, the er like early uh, internet era kind of style of memes and animation and whatnot uh, that I appreciate. Uh, so yeah, it's very educational. Uh, man, for anyone who actually is a taxonomist or someone who studies biology and animals and all that stuff, just knowing that there aren't any hard lines between animals and species it's so blurred so like making it your job to uh classify them uh, man yeah not a job that i would want to have uh but it's certainly very interesting and educational uh i can write out on that sure okay so i yeah i'm looking forward to saying more from salmonella um Again, my name is Colin. This is Chicago Reacts. If you haven't, like, share, and subscribe uh, to see more content like this. Um, and I guess we'll see you next time. And without further ado, here are our patrons who make it all happen.